Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the complex analysis. Today I will explain you the next result known as Rauchi theorem. Myself Dr. Harishkar, you can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of the complex analysis. In this playlist you can see the various theory lectures related to the argument principle limit point singularity and many more lecture available in this playlist. You can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel for various uploaded videos. Now what we have discussed so far, we have learned the concept of the argument principles as well as its various examples in our last lecture. In the today's lecture, we will cover how we can extend it the applications of the argument principle to the Rauchi theorem. What is argument? What is argument principle? So whenever you have the analytic function fj, which is defined inside the C close simple close contour C, then we can calculate the value of 1 over 2 pi iota integration over the closed curve C f dash over f is n minus p where n is the number of the zeros and p is the number of the fourth. If you look about this statement clearly say there is a need of only one analytic function that is f of z. There is only need of the one analytic function. Now in the case of the Rauchi theorem we will use the two analytic functions and try to compare the number of the zeros. So that's the basic motivations or extensions of the argument principles to the Rauchi theorem. Now the Rauchi theorem is named after this uh, Egan Rauchi and which states that for any two complex valued holomorphic functions, if you take the f and g are the two functions such that absolute value of the g is less strictly less than not equality strictly less than of the value of the f on the g on the c on the curve c then the number of the roots or the number of the zeros of the fz as well as the number of the zeros of the f plus g have the same number of the zeros and moreover each has the same zeros and the as many times its multiply c now what is the statement of the rauchi theorem in the proper manner if you have the close simple close counter C curve C F and G are my two analytic function which are defined inside and on the boundary of the circle C such that G is less than of the F remember it's the absolute value then F and F plus G always the same number of the zeros and this is a very very beautiful result every time whether you are the students of the CSR net examinations or you are a part of the gate examination. One question definitely ask related to the Rauchi theorem in the in these examinations page, paper. So you must watch this video till the end very deeply and you can like and comment on this video as well. Remember the number of the zeros are same for the total functions f plus g and the function which value is greater than because f is my greater than g so f and f plus g has the same number of the zeros. Proof is a very very simple you can see if I consider the simple close counter c because remember f and f plus g has the same number of the roots only in the inside the circle only on the inside the circle not on the boundary of the circle fine remember not on the boundary of the circle not on the c only in the inside the circle. Now how you can prove that? Firstly we will see whether f and f plus z are the non zeros on the boundary of the c. Fine. So how you can prove that? It's a very simple. I can assume I can assume there exists one point say let's say a I can assume there is a one point a on the boundary of the circle such that the value of the f of a is my zero fine i assume there is a some point a on the boundary of the circle such that f of a is equal to zero now as per the given statement what is the value of the g of a g of a is also less than of f of a because this is the value on the circle and what is the value of the f of a is zero this implies g of a is less than zero but we all know absolute value can never be zero. This implies g of a is zero. But that is a contradiction 
because it said strictly less than sign which contradict the given hypothesis because of this strictly less than sign from from f of a0 g of a0 this implies f of a and g of a are same but that is not true that is a contradiction to the given statement second case i can assume there exists some point a such that f a plus g a is my zero what does it means g of a is my minus f of a what does it implies this implies absolute value of the g of a is equal to absolute value of the f of a so which is again contradiction to the given statement f g of z is less than f of z so that is again contradiction to the hypothesis so that means f of neither neither f of z is zero nor f of z plus g of z zero on the boundary of the circle fine now so that means neither f of z nor f z plus g z has a zeros on the boundary of the circle now i can define because from this case you can you can analyze from this one is i can write as a g of z absolute value divided by absolute value of the f of z which is less than 1 i can consider this quantity is my phi so i can take phi is my g of z divided by f z what does it implies this implies absolute value of the phi z is less than strictly less than 1 on the boundary of the circle so this implies g of z is my phi into f can you find the value of the derivative what is the value of the g dash of the z so that will give you the phi dash of the z into f dash f plus phi of z into f dash of z why i use the g dash because i try to use the concept of argument principle that i discuss in our last lecture fine so that is the value of the g dash is phi dash plus f now clearly say now clearly say f and g both are my analytic functions so this implies phi is also my analytic functions and once we know the phi is analytic this implies phi dash is also analytic function now we can once we know this analytic function within and on the circle i can apply the argument principles so i assume the number of the zeros of the f z is my n1 number of the zeros of the f z plus g of z is n2 then what is your target as per the given statement your target is to prove they have the same number of the zero that means your target is to prove n1 is equal to n2 this is your target so now how you can prove that i can apply the argument principle what is the argument principle is 1 over 2 pi iota because the function is analytic so the value of the p will be my zero so therefore the value of the n1 is corresponding to the value of f i can write as f dash over f value of the n2 corresponding to the value of f plus g again your target is to always remember your target is n1 is equal to n2 so i can start the value of n2 minus n1 so i can take the lcm this is over the closed curve c so it is f into f plus g is my lcm this value will be f into f dash f into g dash minus f into f dash minus g into f dash of d z so clearly say f value will be cancel the remaining ex expression becomes f into g dash minus g into f dash i can substitute the value of the g and the value of the g dash in the expression of g dash and the g fine now you can open this bracket what will happen 2 pi iota over the curve c this value will be if you open them it will be phi dash f square plus f phi phi dash minus phi f f dash i can take an f is a common 1 plus phi clearly say this value will be cancel f square will be cancel 
the expression becomes phi dash divided by 1 plus phi. Now, we've seen that phi is my analytic function. Fine. Why? Because we have defined the value of the phi is g over f. f and g both are analytic, so phi is also analytic. This implies phi dash is also analytic function. Derivative of the analytic function is also analytic. This implies phi dash over 1 plus phi is also analytic. Is it fine? So once the function is analytic and we all know by using the Cauchy theorem. What is the Cauchy theorem? Once the function is analytic, their integration over the closed curve is my zero. So I can use by the Cauchy integral formula, integration is zero. So therefore, n2 minus n1 is zero. This implies n1 is equal to n2. And that is the required proof of this result. Fine. So you can see that it's a very simple proof I have mentioned you in this lecture. Hope you can like and comment on the video as well. Now, once you have analyzed the proof, the, but the question arises is how you can find how you can find the value of the fz and gz. For example, the given polynomial is say here. Is it given to you whether this is my f or this is my z? Do you have the value of the f and g? So your target is how you can select the value of f and g in your competition exam. So once you can select the value of the f and g, only then you can apply the Rauchi theorem. So I will tell you the simple way how you can define the f and g. Always remember, your given function, whatever the function is here, this is my given function. Your target is to express the function in terms of f plus g. Fine. So that means out of these three terms, either f is my g of uh, z to the power 7 and the rest of 1 is my g. Or if f is my minus 5 z to the power cube, then the remaining one is my g. But how you can select the f and g? You can pick the value of the f which grow very faster. Fine which grow very, I will explain you with the examples as well. So once you can choose the value of the fz, which grow faster as well as dominate the terms gz, and then you can apply the Rauchi theorem. For example, prove that all the zeros of the functions, there is no zero lies inside the circle. So can you draw the circle? This is my circle, fine. Now, what is my f? What is my g? I will tell you the very, very simple approach. So look at that. Firstly, you can write this function. Fine. First, firstly, you can remember that the value of f is always, always remember, the value of the f is always the single term. f is always be the single term. The meaning of the single term is f may be z raised to power 7, f may be minus 5 z raised to power cube or it may be 12 but f can never be like of z raised to power 7 plus 12 or minus 5 z cube plus 12 or it can never be minus 5 z raised to power cube fine this can never because it involvement of the two terms fine these all are my single terms so f is always my single term and whatever the rest terms, whatever the rest terms, that is called as my g of z. For example, if g f is my z is power 7, then the remaining value is my g of z. If minus 5 z raised to power cube is my f, then z raised to power 7, z raised to power 7 plus 12 is my g of z and so on. Clear? Now, how you can find that? Look at the values on the boundary. Compute the each term. Compute the value of the each term. I can write firstly for you. Compute the value of the each term on the 
boundary of the circle on or the boundary of the curve so cal compute the value in absolute value fine so what is the meaning of that what is a circle is z is equal to 1 so what is the absolute value of the that will be 1 raised to power 7 that is 1 fine so this number is my 1 what is the absolute value of this case is a 1 minus 5 what is the absolute value of this number it is a 5 1 cube that number is my 5 what is the absolute value of 12 is 12 now look at that which one is my maximum value which one is the maximum value this 12 is my maximum value the term corresponding to the maximum value is 12 so i can take f of z is my 12 and the rest of the term what is the rest term is z is power 7 minus 5 z cube is my g of z is it clear i again repeat that let me again repeat you look find all those values on the boundary of the curve at the absolute value on the z is equal to 1 this value is my 1 minus 5 z cube the absolute value is my 5 absolute value is my 12 out of all these three values look at the value which is my maximum what is the maximum value is maximum value is my 12 so that value is corresponding to my fz the term corresponding to the 12 is my f of z so f is my 12 and the remaining term this is my remaining term we call as the g of z now clearly say this is my constant function every constant function is my analytic function this is my polynomial every polynomial is my continuous or every polynomial is my analytic functions so therefore both the functions are my analytic inside the domain now your target is to find gz over fz fine so you can start from here and prove whether this is less than 1 or not if this is less than 1 then only you can apply the rauchi theorem otherwise no so how you can apply that i can write this number is z raised to power 7 minus 5 z cube i can write this number is also z raised to power 7 plus minus 5 z cube divided by 12 i can also write this number is 1 on the boundary of the circle fine this is my 1 raised to power 7 plus 5 1 raised to power cube divided by 12 so that number will be 5 plus 1 6 over 12 which is my half and half is less than of 1 and once this condition satisfied yes you can say by the rauchi theorems what is the largest value if g over f is less than 1 that means g of z is less than of the fz so therefore the value of the fz and the total have the same number of the zeros so but what is the value of the fz the f of z is my 12 and how many zeros are there how many zeros of this functions so there is no zero of this function so therefore what is the value of the f plus g f plus g is my complete function and it implies it has no zeros of the functions in the domain mod of z less than 1 fine so always remember your target is to find the value of the f and g in a simple manner if you want more examples on the rauchi theorem we will see the next lecture you can put a comment whether you needed more examples on the rauchi theorems or not so far you can like and comment on this video you can share this video with your friends thank you very much students best of luck